What is up Cinephiles, welcome back to Screen Kings. Today's video we'll be talking about the Netflix drama thriller film called Trees of Peace directed and written by Alana Brown. This one is based on a true story and if you know me, these are my favorite kinds of movies because there's an automatic way to the story knowing that these events transpired in real life so I am immediately invested. Anyway, this story takes place during 1994 in Rwanda in Africa. I am not familiar with this genocide that happened during that time but after my research apparently there are two classes in Rwanda. We have the Hutus and the Tutsis. The Tutsis are the more privileged people. They have access to better education and so on. So during that time these two classes of people are pitted against each other and Hutus are haunting the Tutsis. It is a horrifying event in the history and while all of the characters are fictional, the movie is inspired by real life accounts of women who have been hiding during that time. So in this movie, we have four women. Two of them are Hutu. There is a nun, there is a pregnant woman, and another one is a Tutsi. She has a tragic backstory. Actually, every one of them have their own tragic backstories and another one is an American social work volunteer. These people are the perfect representations of the women who have been affected by this horrifying tragedy in the history. So knowing that they have different beliefs, different personalities, they will clash and they will develop mistrust and arguments over the number of days that they're going to stay in this small cramped room. It's basically a box. I'm not gonna say how many days they stay in this because I don't want to spoil the film for you guys. But basically, they only have little access to food and water from whoever tries to help them. So expect this movie to be really harrowing and disturbing. But at the same time, this is a must watch. You need to be on a proper mindset though because this movie has some serious emotional damage. And for me, it wouldn't be possible if all of the actresses here are not great. They are all exceptional. As an example, the script allowed them to reach their fullest potential. I love how each of these characters, they transcend on being just an archetype. They all have their tragic backstories which are naturally laid out as the movie progresses. And they all have their moments, all of the paranoia and the traumas that they have are being shed into light. And eventually, they have to realize that even though they have different perception and beliefs on the war that's happening around them, they're basically on the same boat. So they have to rely on whatever sisterhood that is presented in front of them because they need it for them to survive. I'm gonna give a shout out to the four actresses here. We have Elian Umihire, Charmaine Bingwa, Ella Cannon and Bola Kolyosho. These are all fantastic actresses and director Alana Brown has taken up the challenge to present it as engaging as it can considering that most of the film occurs in this small cramped room. I think she did a great job in using the camera work along with her cinematographer. There are a lot of creative shots to show the time lapse and there are some aerial shots, some needed close-up shots to portray the fear in our characters and also to create that sense of dread and claustrophobia so it got into me considering that I was experiencing basically as a viewer I felt like I was in there with them throughout the film. My favorite element in this movie would have to be the small window, their small source of sunlight and I think director Alana has utilized that to give it a microscopic view of the horrors that happening around them. Basically the movie does not show the horror but it relies on the imagination of the audiences and just by showing the faces of terror in our characters so I think it's a brilliant decision and yeah I mean you hear the people screaming, children crying, people getting hacked and the guns are blazing so it remains to be something that's really uncomfortable to watch and I think even if you haven't lived during that time or you're not aware of 
what's happening during that time i think there's a universal sense of fear and that rooting interest that you have for these characters to be invested in their story and throughout the film even if the events are horrifying there is a note of hope towards the end and it's just an inspiration to see how this Rwandan people, most especially the women, have shown resilience during that time. And overall, I think this is a story of a nation trying to rebuild itself from the ashes. It's also inspirational in a way that you're trying to find your commonalities with your perceived enemies. And overall, this message of love and peace being greater than hatred and division that's happening during that time so even if this is a horrific event in history it all ends on something that's illuminating and profound so for that i'm gonna give this a four and a half out of five stars of course this movie won't be for everyone and maybe what's stopping me from giving this a perfect score is i felt that the last few minutes of the movie are a bit rushed and I wanted to see that epilogue just to give it a strong finish. But of course, this is just a matter of personal preference. But yeah, how about you guys? Have you seen this movie? If not, I really recommend you guys checking out this movie. I think the last hiring movie that I've seen is Seven Prisoners, which is on Netflix. It reminded me of this movie, even if that's a different theme. It's more on human trafficking. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video, hit that like and subscribe to me if you haven't yet for weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Thank you so much guys for watching. Until then, I'll see you all on the next one.